is coming straight from the heart in path to impart we're giving all sinners a brand new start impact to impart we're sending the message well praise the lord welcome to impact to impart and indeed it's such a joy to be with you again on another broadcast here in our ministry as usual we are here to share with you the message of hope where jesus christ in his word have declared unto us that he offers peace eternally and we as a church we are here to help other people to escape and so that's the mission that's the mission that we have to share with you the good news of our lord and savior jesus christ and today it is indeed a wonderful day I want to share with you this afternoon a couple of thoughts and I trust that you will be encouraged as we will continue to preach this word. You know, last time I, I remember sharing, let's do the work. And I am quite certain that many of you would have listened to the broadcast and, and um, some of the information you might have been wondering, okay, let's share the work, let's do the work. And um, it's, it's, it's important, the word said, Jesus Christ declared, work while it's day for the night cometh when no man can work but it's more there's more to it and i want to share some more concerning this concept of let's do the work because what happened is that there is something that the word of god speaks about that quite frankly a lot of people seem not to understand the gravity of this matter you know, the Bible talk about it in Genesis, what happened, and we know the story. Man was created. God had done all his wonderful works, made the sun, the moon, the stars, the birds, the animals. And, and when, it was the, when it came to the, the final day of creation, he made man. And he said, wow, this is the best. This is the best of them all. And so he blessed man. And he gave man the opportunity. He said, now have dominion. And indeed, man had that privilege. But the word of God went on to see that as man continued on in their process here on earth, something happened. And this changed everything. What happened? The word of God in, in Hebrew said that sin entered the world. Romans also makes mention of this, that sin entered the world through loss. And uh, the loss, when it is full, it brings about death. So what happened in Genesis chapter 3, chapter 4, down to chapter 5, is that man had now come into a situation where God had not designed him for. And the word of God said, no, because of the sin that they committed, the sin of disobedience, the sin just as Lucifer, Satan himself, committed a sin of rebellion they also really did commit such a, a sin against god god who having revealed everything to them himself unto them they denied him and went behind a strange word and because of this when god came down he called out to 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 to, to man he said adam where art thou and adam he, the word of god said he hid himself he was hiding, didn't want to face God because he said, I'm naked. Now, I mean, all the time he was naked, he did not, was not concerned about his nakedness before. But all of a sudden, Adam finds himself in a predicament whereby he's now saying, I'm naked. And because of my nakedness, I hid myself, which really was not the truth. It really was because of his information that now received, he was now exposed to further knowledge. And his further knowledge caused him now to be aware of both good and evil. Now, what God did in the Garden of Eden there is that when he spoke to the man, he told man the ground is cursed. He spoke to man and he said, now because of this, mankind is now going to experience death. And though we're sharing and we're speaking about the message of hope, Today I want to share with you the importance and the seriousness of doing the work because there is these elements of that and you know my word, elements, not element because most of the time we think about that, we just think about this first experience of that. 
And this death really speaks about a separation from our body. A separation from a body. You know, the word of God said that because of this, now it's appointed unto man once to die, and then after death comes judgment. Because of sin, man is not going to experience. God said, I'm going to give you a lifespan here on earth. Now, the early men on earth, they had longer lifespan. And further along in the scripture, God said, listen, I'm going to reduce it down to three scores and ten. And perhaps on the reason of strength, you get some more. If you get to eight, you get to 90, you get to 100. Bless his name. But now the reality is that nobody gets past those numbers anymore. Why? Because... It is appointed, it is it's an appointment that you have, sir, madam, young man, young lady. There's an appointment that you have with death. That's the reality of it. But it doesn't stop there because, you see, that's where the trouble is. Because most, most people have all sorts of different concepts about what happens next. And this is what I really want to talk to you about this afternoon. Because after this first death, the word of God says... Five times he said it, that there is a second death. And this one is not the same as the first one. You know, I heard somebody said to me sometime recently, you know, when you die, your thoughts perish with you. When you, when you die, you don't know what, what, nothing again. But the truth of the word of God says unto us that at the point of death, you now start living a new life that is called eternity. And in this eternity, it can either be eternity in the presence of God or eternity outside of God, which is called the second death. That second death has been mentioned in the book of Revelation. It has been mentioned, it, as I said, up to five times it has been mentioned about this second death. And we want to peep a bit at it this afternoon even as the word of God had made it known unto us that there is something that is coming that's very serious and if we don't preach this gospel to you this afternoon I tell you your situation is a woeful one because the word of God said that this debt is not one that you can escape from this second death is not one whereby it's a, it's a casual, a casual movement whereby you, you know, you could participate if you want or not participate. The, when it comes to the first death, every single person has to participate. But when it comes to the second death, it's not everybody going to experience it. This one is subjected really and truly to what you do now. Did you just hear what I said? What you do now is going to determine what happens if you die a second time or if you live forever. And guess what? You do not get the opportunity to fix this in a next life. There is no next lifetime for you or I that we get to fix whether we face a second death or we enjoy a second life you hear me this afternoon two is before us a second life the current life that you have you're living you're enjoying your life you're enjoying your being and you're enjoying this life but this life this first life that you have will be interrupted by your first death after your first death there is coming a second chance now. Either you're going to have a second life or you're going to have a second death. But what the second death really speaks about is really horrifying. And let's take a little look at the scriptures, a couple of scripture references that talks about this. Let's look at Revelation chapter 2 first. In Revelation chapter 2 verse 11, it speaks expressly concerning this it says he that had an heir let him hear what the spirit said unto the churches he that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death are you hearing me do you have an ear to hear this afternoon is your ear working is your inner ear working is your spiritual ear working 
Now, some might go and get technical and say, well, you know, this is to the churches. Okay, well, let's, let's look a little further. Let's look at Revelation chapter 20. And in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, the author writes concerning the second death another time. Let's get to the word. Here where it says, in Revelation chapter 20, verse 6, it says, Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Here you go again. Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection. You know, as a young man, I'm hearing, you know, different, you know, scholars and intelligent people expressing knowledge about the word of God. And I'm and hearing some saying that there is no resurrection. Forget about this theory. There's no resurrection. I tell you, the word of God just said, blessed is he who gets into the first resurrection. I want to be part of those. What about you? I'm not going to be the ones that are lying around, waiting around. You know, some people I heard a statement made one time that, you know, the doctrine of re uh, resurrection is called escape theology. I, I love that such statement. And I hope you're watching this around the world. And I'm hoping that some of you international speakers are listening to this. You call this escape theology and you make a mockery of it. Well, I tell you, if a storm comes uh, in America and other parts of the world, a tornado comes, who does not have a house with a basement that he can escape? A storm is coming your way. Do you not want to escape? A fire, a volcano is erupted and it's coming down to your city, to your village. Do you not want to escape? But there is coming a day, the word of God said that fire and brimstone is going to be coming down on this earth. Judgment will come. Do you not want to escape? I tell you, I like this doctrine. You can call escape theology. Well, I am one of those who will be escaping. As a matter of fact, our program, we say we help other people to escape. And the resurrection is the perfect escape because the word of God says that there is judgment that's going to come to this earth. It's not going to be quick and swift, you know. It's going to be systematic because the word of God said that there must be a rapture that's going to take place. And after this, there is something that's called the tribulation and the great tribulation where Lucifer, Satan, and his, his, all his agents, his, his network, they are going to have dominion here on the earth and they're going to rule and they're not going to be a peaceful rule. They will be terror on this earth. But who will escape? Who doesn't want to escape? The word of God in Revelation said that period is going to, is, is going to be a strange period because they will not be able to find debt. You know, <laughs> in Hollywood has some movies these days about mummies where people find themselves unable to die. It's in the world is going to happen. The day is going to come where men will be looking for death and death will be hiding from them. And they have to face up with all the torment and terror that that old dragon desire to lash out, to unleash on men. But who is going to escape? Those that trust in the Lord. Those that believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and was looking for his resurrection. We will be caught up in a moment in a twinkle of an eye. We're gone. We are gone. You want to stay here? You go right ahead. But I want to let you know that you too can escape. Christ had made it available to you. But you know, we're not talking just about that. We're talking about this second death. And in, in Revelation chapter 20 again, we're down in verse 14 this time. Revelation 20 and verse 14, the word of God says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Death, hell, were cast into the lake of fire. And he said, this is the second death. What happened there? Is the great white throne judgment taking place? God is wrapping things up. Lucifer 
that devil, that deceiver who have deceived the whole world and the nations to go after his strange doctrines, there is an end that is coming for him. And those who have followed him, those who have gone after the strange things that he perpetrates and the lies that he has so demonstrated and so, so implanted in your minds, they too shall be judged for lack of discretion and wisdom in choosing properly. You must choose. And you know, I don't want my time to run out today before I tell you this. It is not in order for you to procrastinate concerning this. So hence the reason I'm saying let's do the work. Let's do the work because there is coming a day that there is going to be a second debt. This is serious. This second debt, as I get ready to close, really speaks also not just about the separation from the body one scripture says don't be afraid of man who can kill the body and that's it but be afraid of god you learn to fear god who after the body has died has the capacity the power the tenacity to raise up that body again put life back into it and say no i would like you sir to answer me these questions as to how and why you have lived the way that you live. Wow. I hope that made you afraid and concerned because the word of God said that is how you should see it because this God that we serve is not going to be tangling up with all the theories and all these things that men has in her. There is coming a day that God will put an end to all philosophy and universities and ideas and thoughts and, and all the concept that we have about Mars and, and Pluto and, and life outside of the earth. All of this is going to be brought to naught one day. And God is going to ask you, sir, you, ma'am, what did you do with your life and the gospel that you have heard? Oh, some of you have read it. You're listening to this message via the internet. And you're tuning in. You're tuning in. And you say, what is this preacher talking about? And I'm glad that I'm speaking about this this afternoon because God will hold you accountable. There is a second debt. And let me get to the last scripture that I want to share concerning in Revelation chapter 21. Verse 8 first, then we look at verse 11. Revelation chapter 21 verse 8 says, But the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's who's going to be there. That's the cross-section. Hell and all the agents of Satan, firstly, death and hell and the agent, and then all the others who have chosen to go after his way. Are you one of those who are going after the way of Satan? After the way of this world? After the wiles? After the pleasures? After all that your heart desire? There is your list. Revelations 21 verse 8. And let's go finally to Revelation 21 verse 11. And it says, hmm? And it says, Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And it was just wrapping up the thoughts concerning what is going to be happening. God is going to pre create a new heaven and a new earth. This all will pass away. My time is almost up today and I want to, to be able to close this broadcast to let you know that this second debt, if, if it, I did not mention it before, what it really means is this, and listen to me carefully, what the second debt means. It means that every opportunity that you had and every opportunity that you have been given every single avenue that was made available for you to get to come to God will now be closed can I say it one, one step further in the lake of fire where Satan that old devil hell death, antichrist 
the dragon, the beast, and all the list of those who were unbelieving, and mockers, and scoffers, and, and, and homongers, and idolaters, and murderers, and, and liars of all sorts, when they find themselves there in the lake of fire, it is the final judgment. And God is not going to be giving you another chance. There is no third chance. So what are you going to do about it? I want to remind you, my message today is, let's do the work. Let's do this work of preaching this gospel. And today, before I close this broadcast, I want to give you the opportunity. I want to give you the opportunity, sir. Stop procrastinating. Do what is honorable and right. And next, next broadcast, I'll be talking a bit about what is honorable in the sight of God. It is about time you start doing the honorable thing. It's about time you start in the path of righteousness. The word of God says, repent every one of you and be baptized for the remission of sin. I want to close there today. I want to ask you right now in your home, would you just take this moment and commit your life to Christ? This is the best thing that you can do. I challenge you. If you don't, you will experience the second death. Total separation from God. And you don't have another chance to fix it. Pray with me this afternoon. Say, dear God, I've heard your word. And today, I've purpose in my heart that I want to experience your transformation. I do not desire to experience separation from you forever. And so I repent of my sins. And I ask you to see me with your blood unto eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll be right back. I thank you for joining our broadcast today as we get ready to wrap up. Me love me Jesus, oh. Me love me Jesus, oh. From my little boy, me love me Jesus, oh. Me love me Jesus, oh.
Well, praise the Lord. I trust that you're encouraged today, even as you heard that song being ministered. We want to remind you, Impact to Impact Ministries, we're here to share this gospel, this good news. Our team of our, our entire ministry is imparting the whole world to the whole world, restoring men to God. Impact to Impact Ministries, we are located at the corner of Plymouth Road and Union Connector. Our service every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. It's a glorious time of praise and worship. You are invited to come join us, come be a part of us. Those of you who are watching us on the internet, very soon coming your way, we'll be streaming live on a Sunday morning. So you can be joining us as we will be airing our programs right here at this time on and, and the other times that you're going to be seeing us on the internet. We want to continue to remind you though that it's very important that you get your heart ready to reach, to be able to meet with God. So this is Bishop Sheldon Holder again saying thank you for tuning into a broadcast. We want to say a special thank you for those of you who have been writing in, those of you who have been giving your comments, and those of you who have also been partnering with us in prayer or, and have been given to this ministry. Continue to do the good work. Let us do the work together. Be encouraged. Escape not just the first, but the second debt is more so important for you to escape. Escape it through Christ. Escape it by having him in your life. God bless you. Love you real good. This is Bishop Holder saying shalom. Till next time. Impact to impart. We're sending no message coming straight from the heart. Impact to impart. We're giving all sinners a brand new start. Impact to impart. We're sending the message. Spreading the word. We're sending this message all over the globe.